February 8th, 1996, History Class for the Young People. I call upon all of you to open your minds to receive understanding today, for I desire to put into your thinking the greatness of Heavenly Father in relation to this earth upon which we live. I will tell you what the prophets have told us, and even if you can't fully understand how, the Lord says, those that believe are never condemned. It is the unbelievers that will be condemned. Believe what I tell you, because I only repeat what the prophecies describe. When this earth was created, it was not rotating around the sun where it presently rotates or revolves. It was created near the planet Kolob, according to the record of the prophet Abraham. This earth was born. It was made from other planets as a spirit first. And then the Lord clothed it with the body in the creation. This earth we call Mother Earth, and it was many times larger than it is today. The gods, each god, lives on an earth, and the earth where Heavenly Father lives is covered with fire. It has so much of the Spirit of God in it and around it, being the dwelling place of Heavenly Father. It is covered with heavenly fire, or the Holy Ghost. That is the description of the glory of the celestial kingdom. But where the celestial kingdom is, it is fire. And thus it keeps out all filthiness. No uncleanliness can be there. If there are people unworthy of the celestial glory, they cannot even approach it, because the fire would consume them, burn them up. We understand this sun that shines upon us today, and shines upon the planets that go around it. That is a heavenly earth. And there you can see what this earth will one day become. If we were to send any object toward the sun right now, the scientists say it would burn up when it got anywhere close. The fire is so hot on the sun. We are called a telestial earth in a telestial condition where the devil lives and tries to tempt us. We call this earth a fallen earth, where there is disease and death. What I'm pointing out to you today is this earth, though it's in the telestial fallen condition, it will one day become a heavenly planet, a sun, making light of its own. But this earth has to go through all the preparation needed to become celestial. Before you and I could become celestial beings, we first had to become telestial. We had to fall from heaven through being born into this body. We have to overcome evil and prove ourselves worthy to go to heaven as we call it. Where is this heaven that we are, will go to? We're taught that the heaven we will have is the one we make. This earth was made first of the spirit, and then it was clothed with elements, or physical elements that make a physical world. The prophets have taught us the reason the plants can grow out of the ground is because of the life 
in the earth. The life of its spirit. I remind you we've told you the story of the prophet Enoch. How the Lord let him see the earth was alive. And Enoch was able to hear the earth groan and weep and cry. He asked the Lord, why does the earth weep? Why is it in such pain? The Lord told him, because the people on the earth are wicked, and it brings great suffering and pain to the earth. The earth was made to become a heaven, and there are wicked people on it. He asked the Lord, when would the earth rest? The Lord showed him the time when he would come to earth and die on the cross. Yet the earth was still in great suffering and pain. Enoch kept asking, when will the earth rest? Finally he was shown the last days, 6,000 years after the fall, the time when we live today. And he was shown there would be great destruction to wipe off all evil from the earth. Then the earth would rest for a thousand years, and it would be changed from a celestial to a terrestrial condition. It would be translated like we heard about Enoch and others. Today, it seems like the things of this earth decay, break down, and die. But when the earth is changed during the millennium into a terrestrial condition, the destructive parts, many of them, will be taken away. When Adam partook of the forbidden fruit, that's when things like the flies and the destructive things came that eat away and destroy, causing everything to decay. But during the millennium, these creatures or these elements that decay and destroy will be removed to a great degree. People's bodies will live nearly a thousand years. And things won't decay and be destroyed so quickly. And all the Lord has to do is take away those things from the earth that cause it to be a celestial earth. How will the millennium come about? It will start in one place, says the prophet, where there is a united people, each one of them keeping the Spirit of God. And they grow in their dominion, their houses, their cities, until there's a righteous people all across this land of America. By the Spirit of God being here in a great degree, the earth will change. Even the animals will live peaceably. They won't fight and kill each other. It says the little child will be able to play with a poisonous snake or the lion and the bear. That's how it will be on this land. And it will all be accomplished by a clean and pure people keeping sweet. For a thousand years the earth will rest. And if there are evil people in other nations, they won't dare to show their evil, lest they be rebuked by the Lord. At the end of the millennium, wickedness will grow on the earth again. The people will be tempted and tried by Lucifer. And at the end of the millennium, that is when, that is a thousand years from now, that's when Father Michael will appear on the earth, the father of this earth, and he will gather together all his righteous children who have been resurrected. Lucifer will gather together his people, the wicked people who have been on the earth, and there will be the last great battle between good and evil. It is called the Battle of Gog and Magog. Some have asked what does Gog and Magog mean? 
Both words represent the devil. It's the battle of Heavenly Father against the powers of darkness. And at that point, there will have been another place prepared for people not worthy of the celestial kingdom. It could be part of this earth that was not celestialized. There will be another planet for the devil and those who are like him. There will be another planet for a celestial kingdom. People who get resurrected and dwell in a celestial glory. There will be another part of this earth or another earth, part of this earth, that will be terrestrialized for those of the terrestrial glory. But this earth was promised by the Lord. It would become a sun. It would become a celestial planet. After the millennium, when the wicked are cast off this earth, then the righteous to the Spirit of God being in them, in their bodies, it will shine forth and change the whole earth. And for the next thousand years, after the millennium, the eight thousand years, this earth will be celestialized. It will start with the people united, and it will grow and increase until they're surrounded by eternal glory fire and the Holy Ghost which will keep out all evil people all filthy things so when we talk about going to heaven wake up learn the lesson the only heaven you will get is the one you make Brigham Young was he taught us Brigham Young taught us that his heaven was within him in his heart and his mind and if we keep sweet and have Heavenly Father's Spirit here, then our surroundings start to take on that same spirit and feeling. I've been into Gentile people's homes after being in my father's home. When I go into those Gentile people's homes, it's darkness. The spirit they have is in the home. Compare that to what I felt around President Jeff. The Gentile people are dark. Even their home has devils in it. When I go in the prophet's home, I feel a spirit of peace. There have been people that lived out in the world, even some of Father's children, who are now Gentiles in a way. They come to his home, and they say, there's such a peace here. The spirit of the people in the home is felt. Even when President Jeffs is away, the spirit he keeps stays there. And that's how it is in our homes. The spirit you keep is there. Now, we are to become a united people that will build a city called Zion. In your notes, mark it down that Zion is heaven on earth. Zion is first in our hearts. We must have a heaven in our heart, in our bodies, in our mind. And then, by keeping the Spirit of God, our homes will become pure. Gather families together, build a city, where every home is filled with the Spirit of God. There is heaven on earth. Then build more cities, with people having children and those children keeping sweet, getting married and having families. Then there's more cities on the land where there's a heaven on earth. And it will grow and grow until the earth changes. Today in your science classes, you can learn how the animals are wild and violent. They eat each other. They destroy each other. But if the people keep sweet, even the animals around us will have the spirit we keep. They will be sweet 
and not desire to harm or destroy. You know an animal can be trained. Imagine it being born after the nature of peace, where it won't desire to kill and destroy. The bear and the lion will eat grass, like the ox, says the prophets. Now when this earth was made, near the planet Kolob, it was many times bigger than it is today. The Lord brought this earth together, so naturally he knows how to take parts of it away. It's so simple. Heavenly Father who made it can take it apart. This is what he has done. The first part of the earth we know of that was removed was out of the Gulf of Mexico. I invite the teachers to point the locations on the earth that I name when you get to your classrooms. Point it out to them. Enoch City was literally taken up. Whether it was put on another planet or enough of this earth was taken away to be a planet, we don't know the details. But his part of the earth has already been changed into a heaven. He will not return until there is a people who have made their part of the earth a heaven. Then Enoch City, meeting with Zion that we will build, they will be alike, both heavens, both a terrestrial condition on earth. And that is what the Lord is preparing us to accomplish. We teach you all these stories of priesthood history because you are preparing to be the people to make heaven on earth. That's why there can't be fighting in your homes. There can't be any evil thing in your character. Because the Lord is about to wipe the wicked off this land. And he will only protect and preserve those who can make a heaven on earth. You want to be part of it, young people. It's going to happen in your day. And you must be about it. You must come out of the world. Set aside the ways of the world. You must study the priesthood way of life. Love it and live by it. For if you become like the world, you must be left behind. You can't be part of the heaven on earth unless there's a heaven in you. And that's the main message I wanted to give you today. A few hundred years after Enoch came Melchizedek, or Shem. And the prophets have taught us that he accomplished the same thing as Enoch. He was taken with part of the earth. So again the earth was separated. The next record we have of part of the earth being taken away was in the days of the great prophet Peleg, before Abraham's time. There a large portion of the earth was taken out of what we know as the Pacific Ocean. When the earth was first made, all the land was connected together. And the water was in the north. Today, we have the continents and mostly water on the surface. The continents are all islands surrounded by water, showing that many parts of the earth have been removed. Peleg's time, the earth was divided, which isolated America, so other nations didn't know anything about this land until the Lord brought them here. The next record we have of the earth being divided is the ten tribes. There were a few righteous among them, and there was a prophet that led them northward, a few of the people. I described in our last class how some of these ten tribes, some people among them, dropped off into Europe, into Russia and other lands. But the ten tribes went north, a few of each tribe, and they were literally taken off the earth, a part of the earth. They are on another part of this earth, a different planet, out in space. 
Joseph Smith pointed out this planet to some of the men in his day that it's coming toward the earth at an angle where the astronomers cannot see it. One more time, a fifth time, the earth was divided. And I want you to name all five times. The fifth time the earth was divided was in the days when Jesus was crucified on the cross. The earth broke up, parts flew off into space because the movement of the earth was so violent. So we have an understanding of five times the earth has been divided. Enoch, Melchizedek, Peleg, the ten tribes, the time of the Savior. In section 45 of the Doctrine and Covenants, the Lord tells us, the moon shall be darkened, or the sun shall be darkened, the moon turned to blood. The sun shall hide its face, and the stars will fall from heaven. The meaning of that is, at the beginning of the millennium, the parts of the earth will start to return. And the first part of the earth that will return is the planet or the ten tribes there. At least part of their planet will mold into this earth, right below Alaska. The ten tribes have been trained. They have enough science training to where they can build highways, roads across the water, just like the builders today can do it across the water in our land. They will build a highway across the waters from their land onto ours. And they will come down to this land of America and kill any remaining Gentiles. They will meet this priesthood people. We will be over in Missouri, many of us, building the city. And they will come and assist. They will help us build the city. There will be millions of them. The prophet in our time will send out you young men as missionaries among the ten tribes. You'll be given the gift of tongues where you can speak in their language. You will teach them. And Uncle Roy told us the ten tribes will be the type of people that can be converted and they will believe the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ as revealed through Joseph Smith. These ten tribes will help build this city of Zion and many cities. And then this priesthood people will go into the temples and give the ten tribes their blessings. They will then go to their promised land. And the tribe of Joseph and Ephraim will live on this land. At that time, the tribe of Judah, which is scattered upon this earth, will be offered the gospel again. And the tribe of Judah will rebuild the city of Jerusalem after it is destroyed. And they will be allowed to have priesthood blessings in old Jerusalem. The tribes of Israel, being the priesthood tribes, will rule the earth. They will do it under the direction of our Lord and Savior, for he will live there personally. For that thousand years of the millennium, the earth will be terrestrialized and changed and purified. There will be a partial burning of the earth with fire, the Holy Ghost. And on this land of America, North and South America, all impure things will be removed. I want you to see the great work ahead of you and you can have it within your reach by having a heaven within. That's where heaven starts within each one of us. The Lord told the prophet Joseph Smith that he was the one mighty and strong and he will appear to President Jeffs 
and tell him who of us is worthy to go back and redeem Zion, building the city of Zion. I ask you young people, are you always at peace? You better get that way. Those are the only type of people the Lord will use. The fighters won't be there. The gripers won't be there. Only those that have peace, a heaven within them, always keeping sweet. Enoch was told his planet will come down and meet the city of Zion that's built on earth. When the Savior appears, he will appear in old Jerusalem and in the new Jerusalem here on this land. He will touch the mighty ocean and there will be great destruction and he will come having cleansed the earth of all impurities. Just like the days of the Nephites, he came after the wicked were destroyed. There will be other peoples, other nations in other lands during the millennium. But on this land of America, there will only be a heaven. The Lord told us in his revelations, this earth was created to become a celestial planet. And it will be the people living on this earth who become celestial in their bodies their bodies and spirits, celestialized, that will change this earth into a sun covered with fire. This will happen within the next 2,000 years, young people, becoming a heavenly planet. People live on earths like the sun. Celestial people do. Jesus, when he appeared to Moses, he was covered with fire. When he appeared to the brother of Jared, he was covered with fire. The angel Moroni, with his resurrected body, he shined with light, filling the whole room with light when he talked to Joseph Smith. The Holy Spirit is light, and light is in people and shines forth from them when they have a great degree of the Spirit of God. When the prophet Moses talked to the Lord up on the mountain, he returned to the camp, and the people couldn't look at his face. He had so much of this fire, or the Spirit of God, in him. His face was so bright they couldn't look at him. It was like looking at the sun. This is real, young people. In the days of John Taylor, his face shined with light as his body was lifted two feet off the ground, trying to teach the people they could not give up plural marriage. They had to live it in order to go to heaven. But heaven shines from the inside out, and then your surroundings will become a heaven. The Spirit of God will lead you to remove out of your home everything opposite to priesthood. You wouldn't have pictures of Gentiles or apostates in your home or the worldly things hanging on your walls, the idols. We have so much to learn how to make heaven on earth and be that people that celestializes this earth. But our first step is to bring in the millennium, to terrestrialize the earth through a people making heaven on earth called Zion. The earth has a life preparation time of 8,000 years. Jesus was born in the meridian of time, the middle of time, 4,000 years after the fall. This earth's preparation will be complete at the end of the 8,000 years. Right now we're at the year 1996, if our calendar is correct. 
It started about 2,000 years ago. Jesus was born 4,000 years after the fall. We are 2,000 years later. This is about the year 6,000. Talking of the Earth's time. At the end of the 6,000 years, the beginning of the 7th, the millennium will be here. The wicked will be wiped off. We only have four years left young people. If our calendar's off a couple of years, that's fine. Maybe six, maybe eight. We don't know exactly. But the time is so short. That's why you hear, you're hearing President Jeff say in meeting, keep sweet no matter what. It's a matter of life or death. For these great destructions, you are going to see and it will all be to prepare the earth for the Savior to come, for a people to make heaven on earth. How will Satan be bound during the thousand years? Only obedient people will be here. They will not listen to his temptations. So awake, young people. You are here at the right place at the right time. You, by having always peace in your heart, can be part of that clean and pure people. Say your prayers. Make sure you don't quit your prayers. That will bring you the Spirit of God always. Maybe you don't understand everything I've said here today. It will be repeated as you grow you learn more. This story has always been the same. This is what the Lord intended for us to help our prophet do. That's why Joseph Smith was sent. So make sure you've learned this lesson. The only heaven you will ever have is the one you will make. And heaven is within. It's inside of us. The heaven round about us will come about through heaven being in us first. Many people say, I want to be happy, but happiness is inside of us first. You can't demand others make you happy. You are the one that makes you happy by obedience. Are there any questions now on this great subject of the history of the earth? I've talked about this because we told you how the ten tribes were taken away. They are one of the first people to return. Yes, ma'am. Yes, the Bering Sea, right below Alaska. Felix's people will come down in the, the Pacific Ocean. Phoenix City will return in the Gulf of Mexico down by Texas and Florida. We don't know where Shem's people were taken away. But we do know those three. Any other questions?